narrative as a plugin created by Ruben to add quests and dialogue into your Unreal projects. For this project, I will be using the, the stylized fantasy pack to create a world for free and the stylized character kit. I've imported them to Unreal and set up a really basic scene. So I can start the game and I can look around, I can walk up to the guy and nothing happens. If I walk up to the door, it's locked. The door has some basic code on it, which if I walk up to it, it will open if it's not locked, otherwise it will close. I can either turn the variable on and off to unlock the door or I can open or close the timeline. So if we want our guy to have dialogue so we can open it, first we need to add narrative. So go edit, plugins, Search for the narrative plugin, enable it and restart. Once you have restarted, you can go to your player and open up their blueprint. Next, go add and add the narrative component to your player. Now that is added, all we need to do is find your event begin play. Feel free to create it by holding P and clicking if you don't have one. And we're going to create a widget like so. We're going to set the owning player to get player controller. We're going to set the class to the narrative default UI. And then we simply drag from the return value and add to viewport. Compile and save. Next, we need to create the dialogue that our guy is going to say. So into your content explorer, I'm going to create a folder inside my blueprints called narrative. And inside, right click narrative dialogue. And I'm going to call mine DB George the doorman. Open this up. We're going to go to class defaults and we're going to open the speakers element up and we're going to add a speaker for our character called George the doorman. Once you've done it, compile and save. Then on your actor and the blueprint, add a tag of your speaker name. This is important, otherwise the dialogue won't work. Now, let's add some basic dialogue inside the dialogue graph. First thing I'm going to do is drag off and say, Hi, I'm George the Doorman. Then I'm going to drag off and add another line for George. I'm going to say, what do you want? Then I'm going to drag two player options. One being, can you let can you open the door? And I'm going to set the option text to be open door. And I'm going to set the other one to be nothing goodbye. And the option text to be goodbye. A nice simple dialogue. Now we need to have a way to actually run the dialogue. So I'm going to click our NPC and I'm going to open his blueprint. And in the viewport, I'm going to add a sphere collision. And I'm going to expand it up, which is the radius that you can talk to the, the NPC. I'm going to make it about there. I'm going to rename it to dialogue sphere. And I'm going to add a custom event for on begin overlap. I'm going to cast the other actor to the player, like so. And then I'm going to begin dialogue from the player using the narrative component. I'm going to set the dialogue to be a promote to variable, like so. And I'm going to set the NPC to remain as the self. I'm going to make sure it's visible in the inspector by clicking the eyeball, compile, save. Now on your NPC, if you search for dialogue, you should be able to assign the dialogue we have just created, like so. You can now test it. If you run up to him, you will see, I am the George Doorman, what do you want? open the door can you open the door please and you'll see now we need to actually action opening the door now there are three methods to open the door one being the easiest and then three being the hardest but the most rewarding i will start with the easiest one we're going to create a sequence and i'm going to create a sequence folder and i'm going to type in george open the door and in here i'm going to click my door i'm going to drag it into the sequencer and i'm going to add an event track and i'm going to add a keyframe about halfway in and i'm gonna i'm gonna double click the keyframe and you'll see it's out of the door so i can simply go and type set locked to unlock my door and then i'm also going to drag off and open it so he opens the door for us like so now in narrative you can click your node so we'll add one more for george and we'll say sure here you go and in the shots we will simply add george the open door save and compile and test now you will see if you run up and execute the event, you will see the door will open, which is perfect. However, the disadvantage with this method is if you move the keyframe beyond how long the text is and you have some animations at the start, the door will not open when George speaks the line because narrative will cancel the sequencer from running. This leads on to option two, which does fix this disadvantage. However, it is not the most ideal solution, but it's one worth looking at. So instead of playing the shot here, we will delete that line by pressing the little backspace. And in the event graph, 
we will override the function on NPC dialog line finished. And in here, we will break on the dialog line and we will get the text. We will simply append an equals to the end and we will promote this to a variable. We'll branch off this by holding B and pressing, link it up. If the dialog line equals our variable, we can then create a level sequence player and then we from the return value, we can hit play and then we can simply set our level sequence to George open the door. And on the variable, I'm going to rename it to George open door line. I'm going to compile and I'm going to set the default value to the phrase that we want George to open the door with, like so. And this will play when George says the line, sure, here you go, it will play the sequence for us. You can run it and compile. Once we talk to George and he says, sure, here you go, narrative will end. And then when the sequence finishes running, the keyframe will play. Problem solved. However, it is not the most generic way of doing it. If you had to have a lot of events running, it could be quite messy. This leads us to option three, the narrative world controller. This is something that I use in my own personal games and it does resolve nearly all problems I have with narrative. Start by going to your blueprints and inside the narrative folder, I'm gonna create a new blueprint and I'm gonna create it as an actor component. You can also use an actor and just drop it into your scene. And I'm gonna call this AC Act Component for Narrative World Controller. And then on your player, we're gonna add this component like so. And we've now added Narrative World Controller. So if we open our narrative world controller up, we can now create a function inside here called play level sequence. And in here, we're going to drag off and we're going to do a create level sequence player. We're going to drag the level sequence onto the function to create it as a variable. You can alternatively click the function and add it as a variable for a level sequence type. And then from the return value, we're going to simply call play. Now that we have done this, we can go back to our content explorer and inside the narrative folder, we're going to create a new custom event. So we'll create a folder called events. And inside here, I'll play, create a blueprint, all classes, and I'll type narrative event. Here we go. And I'm going to call this any narrative event play level sequence. And this will almost do the exact same thing. We will override the execute event. We will drag from the get narrative component and we'll say get pawn, owning pawn, which will be your player. We will, we will cast this to the player blueprint. From the player, we will drag off and do play level sequence, which will use our, our narrative world controller, plug it all up. Make sure you tick this tick here. And then from the level sequence, we will promote this to a variable called level sequence. Make sure you tick the eyeball, compile, save and then override graph display text, append from the return value, and we'll just make this say something a bit nice. Play sequence, and I will drag my level sequence in, and I will connect it to the B node, which will add a get display name. Now with this method, you can get, simply go back to it and delete your event. We no longer need it anymore. And on the dialog, we can now on any single node in narrative, click on the node you want, add a, an event, and add our custom event, play level sequence. And on the default, we will add our level sequence. We have now created a completely generic and reusable narrative controller where we can affect world objects. And now that we've waited, you see the door will open. I prefer option three, it is what I do. The narrative world controller can have as many functions in as you want. And then all you do is create a custom event for each one you want to interact with. And you can have full control of the world. Hello ladies and gentlemen, so I'm just editing the video and I found a lack of something I'd wanted to add to the game. Now at the moment I showed you three ways to open this door, all using the sequencer. So you can talk to the guy, you open the door, the door will open, but it's all using the sequencer. What happens if you don't want to sequence, how do you open the door? So it's actually re really easy it's still to do it. So if you go back to your blueprints and open up your narrative and your dialogue, there's two ways you can do it. The first way is by adding a tag to your door because you can't reference a live object. So if I come in here and go, George, save that. And in the event graph, if you override the on NPC dialogue line finished, you can drag from the dialogue line, do a break. You can get the text again, you can equal it, promote it to a variable, branch it, connect it up. And then on the true, you can actually do get actor with tag, but you can also do all actors with of class with tag. And with this one, you can select BP door, 
which is what mine is. I can put the tag as George the Doorman's Door, and I can just get the first one because we only know there is one. If you've got multiple, you can just do a for each loop, and then I can just call open like so. And this will work the same. Don't forget to just get your final dialog text and set the default value of the variable like so. so. I'll just remove the event here. Nothing in narrative is connected to the sequencer. So now if I come to him and then if you test it now, nothing is connected to the sequencer and the door will still open itself without a sequence. The alternative way is to use the narrative world controller that we built on the third option. So if you delete all of this here and inside the world controller, we'll create a new function called open door. And inside here, we will give it a tag and it'd be a type of name. Then from here, we can do get actor with tag. It's the exact same thing, but because we're opening a door, we can filter around the door, we can get it. And you might think, what's the benefit of doing it in this place versus the line thing? Well, this time we can make an event from it rather than having to check each individual line. So we can go into the events, we can create a new a new blueprint and we can create a, a narrative event. I'm gonna call my any open door. And inside here, just like before in the execute graph, we're gonna drag from the narrative component and we're gonna get owning pawn. We're gonna cast this to the player. We're gonna get the narrative world controller and we're gonna call the open door function like so. And just like with the previous one, we can promote the tag to a variable like so. And we can call this door tag, hit the little eyeball button, jump into the get, get graph display text. And same again, we're gonna just append off of it, give it a name, and then we'll just drag the tag into it like so. And now you can save and compile. And if you jump back into your narrative dialogue, you can still now click any single one, go to events, and we can choose open door and we simply just give it door to doorman's tag there so now i have created one of one journey which opens it with a sequence and one journey that opens it with an event so now we can run up to him we can what do you want we want to open the door normally and the door will open alternatively we can come to him and we can open the door with a sequence which will still work the same um there's two reasons you might want to go either way with a sequence you can easily animate the guy to go up to the door, open the door, stand to the side, do something else, which you can't do with the open door function. And now if you test it and play the sequence, your animation will play and it will open the door, which you won't be able to do from the normal open door function, like so. I hope this helped. If it did, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.